Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at a writing assessment walkthrough. This is specifically aimed for anyone that is studying either Functional Skills English Level 1 or Level 2. We're going to be going through an actual sample assessment from one of the exam boards. We're going to go through how to approach it and how to actually answer each question successfully. Now if you haven't done so already, please can you like and subscribe, it really does help us out when you do so. The first thing I'd like you to do if you look at the skills below and attempt the challenges that follow. So the first thing to think about is which of these skills are needed to pass the writing assessment. So we have a variety of different skills that are needed for all walks of functional skills. We need to think which ones do you specifically need for the writing assessment. So we have skills like skimming and scanning, using varied vocabulary, time management, reading comprehension, DeForest techniques, positive body language and varied punctuation. So once you've thought about which ones apply specifically to your writing, think about what skills do you actually need um, for the assessment and which one you would need for the other ones as well. So which ones would apply for the reading, the writing and also the other element, speaking and listening as well. Now, if we go through this together then, first of all, when we're talking about our writing, one of the most important things is going to be um, varied vocabulary. So are you using the appropriate adjectives, adverbs and all the other stuff to make your writing engaging? Are you using varied punctuation? So generally speaking for level one, level two, everyone should be expected to be able to do the basic level of things like full stops, commas, exclamation marks and question marks. Now if you can use higher level punctuation as well, you're going to get more marks in the exam. Also, time management is a big one. Now, typically in a reading and writing assessment, you're going to have a set amount of time. When we think about the writing assessment, you have two tasks to complete during this time. Now, a lot of people often spend more time on one question than the other. So it's really important that you're able to go away and practice that as well. Now, for the other things as well, we need to think about our DeForest techniques. Now, this is really important for the writing, but you do need it as well for your reading skills as well. So these are the main skills we're going to be thinking about in terms of your assessment. The main things that you need to include to make sure you're going to get a pass on the actual writing exam. OK, so by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to recall the key skills needed for the writing assessment, understand how to plan a response effectively and apply your understanding to a writing assessment walkthrough. Look at the exam question and attempt the challenges that follow. So this is our first writing uh, question and typically we tend to find that the first one is a little bit straightforward compared to the next one which tends to be a little bit more challenging. So here's the full question and as you can see straight away it is quite long winded. So the first thing we need to do once we've read through it is think about the same thing you should think about every time you're doing a writing assessment and that would be can you identify the TAP of the exam question. Now, if you're not sure what we mean by this, the TAP or the TAP means the topic, the audience and the purpose. And this is going to help narrow down and really help you to focus on what specifically you need to write about in your response. So it says then, question one, you have come to the end of your course and your tutor has asked you to write a blog for the college website to discuss the pros and cons of possible next steps in your career, including finding a job, starting on a high level course, volunteer work, or to enrol on apprenticeship. Your task, write the block. So this is worth 27 marks and we have the advisory uh, statement at the bottom saying to write around five to eight paragraphs. So first of all then, if we think about narrowing it down, so what do they really want you to talk about? What key things do you need to focus on in your writing? So the main thing here is that it is quite a big statement, so we need to break it down. So we can see that in this scenario, You've come to the end of your course okay so that would be one thing right typically at the end of the course we need to start thinking about next steps okay so we also need to consider the pros and the cons of the next steps in your career now if you're not sure what we mean by pros and cons that just simply means the good points and the bad points it also gives us some things to talk about now typically if i was writing this i would leave it in bullet points if I was actually writing the question for you because it kind of helps you to focus on the type of things that you could really focus on. So finding a job is one option. Starting on a high level course is another. 
we also have volunteer work and we have an apprenticeship so it's giving you multiple ideas things to talk about as well so the topic is quite a broad one the audience would be quite simple because it is going to be people who's in a similar situation to this so it's going to be people who are at college or about to leave college and go on to the next steps and the purpose would be about the pros and the cons next one then we need to think about what kind of skills do you need to answer this question effectively think about the question in its entirety think about the things that we went over in previous lessons what kind of things are going to make sure that you get a pass with this assessment and then the final thing use a planning guide on the next part to start mapping out your response now i don't know if you typically do a lot of planning when it comes to writing generally we say you shouldn't spend any more than five minutes planning and this is going to be the same for level one level two and also if you're going to see it through to GCSE as well we're going to go through four simple steps to help you improve your planning and ultimately improve your writing as well so use the following steps to help map out your response for the question so the very first thing we need to do we've already went over it is what is the TAP what do I need to focus on again if you're not sure what we mean by TAP it means the topic the audience and the purpose Secondly, step two, what kind of presentational or organisational features are needed? So, for example, if you look carefully at the question we just went over, it says very clearly that it needs to be a blog. So how would you lay that out? What kind of features would you need to use to make sure it actually looks like a blog? Step three, come up with three main ideas about the topic. Now, it doesn't matter what form of writing you get. Generally speaking, we shouldn't really be producing anything more than about five paragraphs, maybe a little bit more if you want to stretch out one of the ideas, but really about five is about the most. So you're going to have an introduction, three main ideas, and then a conclusion. And then the final one, use the DeForest acronym to come up with some key sentences. Now this is a really important thing to think about. Your DeForest techniques are some of the main techniques we're looking for in your writing. So it's important that you know how to use those appropriately. These can also help you to actually keep track of what techniques you've used in your writing and also is a really good way to help you start thinking about what kind of things you want to include in your response. So before we move on then, what I'd like you to try and do is to write the forest down side of your page and come up with a sentence for each one. So if you're not too sure how to do that, we're going to go through that in a bit more detail. If you want to pause it, take your time and go through it yourself, please feel free to do so. But now we're going to jump ahead and look at my ideas. Class feedback, check your understanding against the teacher's ideas. So again, the same thing as we said before, we're going to think about our DeForest techniques and for each one of the DeForest techniques, I'm going to come up with a sentence. So if you're not 100% sure what these stand for, I've actually wrote down the specific techniques that each of them represent. So for the D, we have direct address. A direct address is when you're trying to put someone on the spot and you're talking directly to them. So the sentence I've came up with before joining college you need to make sure it's the right choice for you and you is where we've used our direct address the next one the a would be alliteration so for my alliteration we have joining the wrong course may be horrible and horrendous so it'll be alliteration because we're repeating the same letter of h in horrible and then in horrendous as well the next one following that would be f which is a fact so people who have a better education often find better jobs now this is a fact because I've stated it as a fact, right? If I said that people who have a better education always find better jobs, we know that strictly isn't true. However, because I've said often, it means that it's statistically more likely, essentially. So next one after the fact is opinion. So I think it's better to stay in education and invest in your future. And then we've got two R's. So the first one I would identify would be a rhetorical question. So who wouldn't want to volunteer and give something back? Now, this is a good one because the purpose of a rhetorical question is to get you really to think about the message they're trying to convey. We're not expecting an answer, but we are expecting them to start thinking about the message we're trying to convey. Next one is repetition. So with repetition, if you find a key phrase that you think works really well in your writing, it's worth repeating it. So I've got here, education is key. The more you put in, the more you get out. And you can see there I've put times two. And that's just to illustrate that while I'm planning this, I'm gonna think about actually using this two or more times in separate paragraphs within my writing. 
just to reinforce the main point that I'm trying to get across. Next is emotive language. So it is exciting and terrifying taking the first step in your career. So any word that invokes an emotional response would be emotive language. So you have the words exciting and terrifying there. The next one is statistics. 90% of employers think experience is more important than qualifications. Now, I've no idea if this is true. With the statistics, it's just about making it sound believable. Okay, you can make them up because you're not going to be expected to go away and research the topic you're writing about. That would just be madness. So just think about it in a logical sense. I mean, from a kind of logical point of view, it is believable that more employers think experience is more important than qualifications. I suppose it does depend on the job. But again, think about how you're using these statistics to try and get your point across. And finally, we have a triplet. So this is where we've got three ideas towards a common goal. So further education is vital, important, and will set you on the right path in life. So hopefully when you come through some of these DeForest techniques, it's going to help you thinking about not just have I actually covered the key techniques, but it's starting to get us to think about what are we actually going to include in the main body of our writing. Look at the example and attempt the challenges that follow. Your next steps after college. What about your next steps after college? Trust me, we've all been there. When I started on my college course, I was full of excitement, enthusiasm, and if I'm honest with myself, nerves. A year later, and the feelings have come back like a seasonal illness. All I wanted to do after my exams was sit in front of the telly, but how could I just do that? There were so many options, it was making my head spin. So for the first one then, for the challenge, identify the positives or the negative aspects of the response. For the super challenge, identify where the writers used any DeForest techniques. And then for the final one, the mega challenge, would this response get a pass? And try and justify your response. So look at things like the technical accuracy, look at the level of uh, skill in terms of the techniques that have been used. Is this appropriate for a blog or would it actually lose out on some marks? What we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the teacher feedback and decide what kind of grade or mark this would achieve in the exam. Fast feedback. Check your answers against the teacher's feedback. So here we have on our left hand side there the um, response that we just read through and this is what the teachers said. So first of all, www, what went well? The response has been written in the form of a blog, right? So a blog doesn't need loads of different organisational features. We only really need to have a title. Some language techniques have been used. Now this is an interesting word that we use when we say some. This actually implies that they have used one or two techniques, but they haven't really used many techniques. They haven't used a lot to get a decent mark necessarily. The writer has used an informal tone. Now this is good because it is a blog. It is supposed to be quite informal, quite conversational. And EBI, the response needs to have met the desired word count or paragraph length. So it is quite short. It is quite a nice start, but it's not really hitting the amount that we're looking for in the exam, given the amount of time that you have to do this assessment. And the final one, the response needs to cover all or most of the points in the question. So the things that are covered in the question, those key points that we talked about, need to be addressed. So it's important that you go through and you actually make sure you're addressing what the examiner wants you to address. Now, this is only the first question in the assessment walkthrough. Do check out the second one that's going to be uploaded shortly as well. If you need any additional support or help, the new videos will be added every single week. Alternatively, you can check out our partner channel, Book Home Teaching, for more lessons and guidance on all things English. If you made it this far, guys, please do like and subscribe. It really does help us out when you do so. If you do need anything, please feel free to get in touch. Always happy to help. Best of luck with your work and revision in the future, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.